The Premier League, Ligue 1, Serie A, La Liga and the Bundesliga. The big five leagues. But the order you say them in can have massive effects on what people think of you as a football fan. Premier League fans will label Ligue 1 as a farmer's league. La Liga fans will often tell the Premier League they are overrated and they're too arrogant. It's a fascinating topic that I'm surprised not more work has been done in. And you might think on the Euro Expert channel where we've got a little over a thousand subscribers. Thank you, by the way. Look, you're not going to find an answer here. This guy must know nothing. Well, for myself and the amazing website Breaking the Lines, I did a major study into finding the differences in quality between the European leagues. You can find an expanded article on this video and this article and topic on Breaking the Lines right now to have a look at the real method I've used and have a look at the full results. But here we are going to give you that, just a bit more streamlined, you know, YouTube friendly. Anyway, I am here to tell you which of the big five has the worst goalkeeping? Which league on average shoots from way too far out? Which league is hilariously error prone for its reputation? Which league is paying for the oldest players in the big five? And at the end of that, we will give you the real proper ranking of the big five leagues that's never been done before in a study never seen. However, before we begin, we must go into a disclaimer. The usual way of ranking the big five leagues is UEFA's coefficient system. Let's say Arsenal win a game in the Europa League, that gives them two points and thus England two points in UEFA's system of ranking the countries in Europe on their footballing quality. It makes sense, Arsenal are a rich club with large resources who can compete in Europe. A club like Rennes or Marseille, who both did poorly last season in last year's Champions League, they are unequipped in their resources and, you know, they haven't got the better players. Except this is largely ignoring so many variables. I'm going to give you one example of what happens every single year in the Europa League and the Champions League. Let's look at last year's Europa League clash between Lille and Ajax. Both teams ended up winning their domestic competition and Lille would beat PSG, Monaco, Lyon and even AC Milan in the group stages of the Europa League in 2021 season. Basically, they were one of Europe's best teams. However, when Lille and Ajax played each other in February, Ajax was seven points clear at the top of the Eredivisie, with PSV floundering in form and they were largely expected to go on and ease to the title. Lille, by contrast, were just a point ahead of PSG in one of the most tightly held title races in modern footballing European history. Lille also did have a large amount of resources. Although they used the fewest players in Ligue 1 last year, they had lots of good squad players like Luis Araujo and Bubakari Sumare and Jeka. They played Ajax in the first leg and narrowly lost 2-1 due to two last minute goals. 2-1 is a winnable score to turn around in Amsterdam. However, Lille benched Benjamin Andre, Jonathan David, Renildo and Jose Font for key components of their title winning side. They had simply decided that they would focus on the domestic competition which would bring in more wealth and would probably be a lot more historic than beating Ajax in the Europa League and potentially beating another team in the quarterfinal, maybe reaching the final. This happens every single year. You can think of so many teams who have had this similar situation, a dilemma between between domestic performance and European competition. Think Leicester, Inter Milan. Therefore, the UEFA coefficient system is simply a measure of what the big teams in each league can afford to put towards European competition and will decide to put towards it. It's a distorted image which bears little relevance to how good the relegation fighting teams are in that division, or even the mid-table teams. That's why we chose to ignore it. Now let's get in to the big findings. Goalkeeping. Here we used a measure called post-shot expected goals minus goal allowed. Now that's quite a mouthful, so first let me show how the Bundesliga explains expected goals. Expected goals or X goals help to calculate the likelihood of scoring for each shot in the game. The machine learning algorithm was trained by analysing more than 40,000 shots on goal and can precisely determine the goal probability of all different kinds of shots. The calculation considers the distance and angle to the goal pressure from opposition defenders and the goalkeeper's position. Special case and example alike, the penalty kick. Here, the goal probability is 77%. Now, post-shot expected goals measures what happens to the ball after it's left a striker's foot. For example, the value will go up if it's a shot going into the top corner at 30 miles an hour, and the value will go down if it's a scuffed effort dribbling towards the goalkeeper. Now, you take that value of post-shot expected goals, the value of how good these shots are, and take away the goals conceded, you will either be left with a positive score, which shows the goalkeeper has let in less goals than he's expected to, 
to, or a negative score, which would show the goalkeeper's let in far more goals than he should have. We average this over each league over the past four seasons, and the results are pretty interesting. The Bundesliga, by far, is the worst goalkeeping league in Europe. The average Bundesliga keeper concedes 1.7 goals more per season than they are expected to, compared to the Premier League, the only league here which is positive, which would actually save uh, a little more, about 0.1-ish more than they're expected to. Or in more layman's terms, the term Bundesliga tax for strikers is actually a real thing. You can reasonably expect Jadon Sancho to score at least two less goals uh, in the next season for Man United than he did in the Bundesliga. And you can expect it for every other league in Europe moving to the Premier League. It's a first win for the Premier League fans. Shot distance from goal. This is a lot more simple to understand. Simply, we took an average over the past four seasons of how far teams on average shot from goal per shot. For example, the team in Europe last season that took their shots closest to goal were West Ham, which would explain how well they did. In contrast, Mets in France took their shots on average 20 yards from goal, well outside of the penalty box, which would show poorly on them they're taking too many long shots which are wasteful. The aim of this is to decide which leagues are the most efficient in Europe. And from that, you can see straight away no one takes shots from further out than league earn. They are in fact the only league to take their shots on average outside of the penalty box outside that 18 yard line. Now combine this with goalkeeping data for league gun, then it paints a worrying picture. Either goalkeepers are letting in long shots that they really shouldn't, or Lee Gurn, surprisingly, has the best shooters in all of Europe. <laughs> it's an L for Lee Gurn here. For the Premier League, it's even better though. They are the most efficient league in Europe and their goalkeepers are still the best. This would show on both ends the chance creators and the goalkeepers are at a higher standard than the Prem. However, they are about to take a big L. Pressing versus errors. Now, a player making an on-field error, i.e. Uh, error leading to an opponent's shot or goal, can come from various circumstances. However, we determine the most likely result of that will be pressure exerted on the player. I mean, the entire aim of Jurgen Klopp and Julian Nagelsmann's pressing systems is to force the opposition team into making errors in their own half, giving the ball away so the other team can race up the pitch and shoot and score. Therefore, we determine the average amount of errors you can expect a team to make per season and combined it with the average amount of pressures that each league is making per game. Now, the data here shines amazingly well on the Bundesliga. Not only are they the highest pressers in Europe, but they are also the least error prone, which would show they're the best at handling pressure. It's a gigantic win for the Bundesliga and it shows up the Premier League quite badly. The Premier League are pressing less than the Bundesliga, but they are the most error prone league on average in Europe. It's also interesting how Serie A has really risen in pressures, as generally that identity is mainly built of an old league that is slow and defensive, but Clearly right here, they are pressing a lot, almost as much as the Bundesliga. I will say Liga's Gun's numbers were a bit distorted because in the 17-18 season, they recorded 27.99 pressures per game, which was by far, by far, the lowest in this study. But over the past three seasons, they've been completely in line with the rest of Europe, but we can't exclude any sort of data, so on this study, they're the worst pressers in Europe. So now let's have a look at the makeup of these leagues. Salary and age. As detailed extremely well in the book Soconomics, teams that spend the most on wages slash salary generally are the best ones. Of course, you have the underpayers who are sneaky, like a Leicester, getting more out of the players that they've bought on a cheaper value. And you have the Barcelonas who, they, they pay like billions to their, but uh, Griezmann's earning 800k. But the overall takeaway is it would be interesting to study the average salary given to the average player from each of these leagues. But to take it one step further, we wanted to have a look at the age. For example, if the highest spending league in Europe are spending their money on players who are old and past their prime, then that would show they're dramatically overpaying. And likewise, if the cheapest spending league in Europe have got the youngest players, then that goes some way to explain it. And here are the results. Now, a player's prime age does depend on his position usually but we can genuinely agree outside of goalkeepers it's the mid to late 20s by that metric the premier league's average age of 26.5 would show that they have got the prime aged players in europe it would also explain why they're the highest spenders they are spending the most amount of money for players who are in their best physical prime and interestingly the data actually complements the rest of this well the older you get away from the premier league the, the cheaper the wages get, as uh, first Serie A are a little cheaper, then La Liga are a lot cheaper, and then vice versa, the younger you get from the Premier League's average age, which is 26.5, the cheaper you get, with Liga and by far the cheapest spenders. So I took all of this data, 
and I ranked the big five leagues. Now, this is where my subjectivity comes a little bit in because this is how I've interpreted the data. Maybe many other conclusions can be made, but this is how I would decipher it. The fifth best league in Europe is still League 1. I know that's disappointing for French football fans, but in some instances, it's pretty clear why. The fact that they take their shots from the furthest distance away is quite poor. Their lack of goalkeeping quality just behind the Bundesliga also isn't too great. However, they are certainly heading in the right direction. As shown, their pressing has really improved. In the 2021 season, Liga and shooting distance as well was minimally behind La Liga. The Liga is definitely getting smarter, and if anything, all of this data does show that the distance between Liga and the other leagues, and the leagues in general, is very minimal far less than what UEFA's coefficient ranking would suggest. So just above of Liga, the fourth worst big league in Europe is Serie A. They only come in the top two for one quality measure, pressing. But they're yet to catch up with the Bundesliga in coping with that pressure. They were the second most error prone league in Europe. They're also paying the second most on their players in Europe, but in terms of goalkeeping and shooting standard, they're nowhere near the top. In third position, is La Liga. They have the second best goalkeeping standard in Europe, although they are still in the negative zone. They were also good for errors per season. However, the worrying takeaway is their average age and how much is it increasing. They are already the oldest league in Europe. However, if you look at the 2021 season, their average age was 27.2 and there were six teams who had an average age of over 28. For contests in the Premier League, the only teams that old were Crystal Palace and Burnley. That could also explain why they're the fourth least pressing team in Europe. Their players are less physically fit than other leagues. Now in the top two, we have our bombshell, but don't worry, the Premier League still comes out on top. However, the Bundesliga, which is ranked fourth by UEFA, is clearly for me the second best league in Europe and not far behind the Premier League. Their average age is 25.67, which is well in the prime years. They are players are the least error prone in Europe and they're also the highest presses in Europe. Their only letdown is that goalkeeping standard and it is significantly bad. Despite that, they are still above La Liga, Serie A and League Earn for me. And the Premier League keeps top spot. But before you click off and think that's boring, I do want to say it's still not by too much. Now, UEFA's coefficients say they're barely in front of La Liga, and I don't think the differences between them and the Bundesliga are that tiny, but still. The fact that they're the most error-prone league in Europe is quite interesting, and I would love to hear more about why that is. Because it is interesting the Premier League are paying the most in Europe for players who are committing the most errors. That, in theory, doesn't make sense. What does make sense is they are paying the most money for players who are in their prime, the most efficient chance creators in Europe, and the best goalkeepers in Europe. And if you do combine that with their European performance, it would suggest that the Premier League is the best league, in fact, in Europe. And there we go, that's the top five leagues ranked. Obviously, we're not pulling up millions of trees here in our, in our ranking, but it's pretty seismic. As I said, huge thank you to Breaking the Lions on supporting this study. Please go and check out the article there. I did a full breakdown on it. It's a bit more extended than this video, and hopefully you might learn even more there. You can also have a greater detailed look at the method I put in place. Thank you very much, guys. See you later.